What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Grown Man Sessions. I'm your host, Timothy Rhyme. This podcast was created uh, to empower young men for hopefully for generations to come. Uh, I created this podcast because I always felt like uh, as a young man myself, I would have benefited from a lot more guidance and I feel like I would have made better decisions. So this is just my way of just trying to offer that in return. Um, we will be interviewing grown men to learn from their stories and their experiences and hopefully just grow ourselves and just try to get so, uh, something from what they're sharing with us. And if we say anything that you relate to or, or you can uh, find useful in your life, uh, hit the like, subscribe button, and please drop a comment below. And without further ado, uh, today I have the pleasure of talking with my good friend, uh, damn near family to me. Uh, his name is George Vallejo. George has a very, very unique perspective uh, on me uh, because he's actually seen me like start from like the bottom. You know, when I almost died in 2011 and I moved out to LA in 2012, I ended up staying with George and I was literally at ground zero in my life. Uh, so it's very, very cool to have this conversation with George because I've, I've you know, uh, talked with him and, and learned from him along the way myself. So I'm hoping that you guys get to have that same feel. Uh, so, hey, George, uh, thanks for joining me today. How's it going, man? Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Uh, so, just, you know, just tell everybody real quick a little bit about your journey, about, you know, how you got to where you are and, and kind of the stuff that you're into now. All right. Uh, well, I moved to Sacramento probably like, I want to say like six years ago, 2000, end of 2014, mm -hmm. uh, came from Downey, uh, got a you know, like a once in a lifetime job with the fire department, you know, my wife and I living up here and uh, it's been good, you know, and there's obviously a lot of trials and tribulations in between and, and from, right. you know, moving to school, to work, to figuring out uh, what it is you want to do, what you feel happy doing, so on and so forth. And being I, able to be comfortable with, you know, what you're doing. Oh yeah, man. So how is that going for you? Are you are you, you feel like you're you're at that point? Absolutely. Yeah, 100. percent I mean, there's always things to work on. You know what I mean? There's always um, yeah. there's always um, obstacles. There's always uh, you know new barriers. Whether it's in, in challenging yourself in like in work or, or art or relationships or, you know, whatever, whatever it might be, but yeah, you can, you do that, all that stuff a lot better when you're in a good place. Mentally, spiritually. Absolutely. Emotionally. Yeah. I've, I've had times in my life where, where you definitely feel the anxiety and the stress and, you know, whatever it is that's going on on in all aspects you know what i mean whether it's work school friends family and uh you know having to recognize that you're going through it and pull yourself out of it you know what i mean yeah man i i feel like uh that's that's a very very important lesson that um you know is learned along the way some people earlier some people later but uh how do you think that you were able to pull yourself out of it Man, that's such a that's such a good question because there's there's so many things that are involved with pulling yourself out of ruts or or whatever you want to call it, but it's basically trying to you know focus on a, a goal or goals as small as it might be, mm -hmm. and using the tools around you and finding more tools whether it's, you know, family or, or a community of some kind, you know, uh, music, uh, art, uh, school, religion, you know, whatever, whatever it is that, that the community calls to you, you know, finding that and, and, and using it, um, because it's, it's really easy to look at things. It's easier to look at things negatively. Oh yeah. Uh, we we can very quickly make ourselves a victim. We can very quickly, um, and not to say that there's, you know, not a lot of things that we're actually overcoming. It's not to diminish that. It's just that yeah. we're quick to make ourselves a victim, and and in that headspace is the is the issue because yeah, you're limiting yourself to emotions that you really don't want to be feeling all the time, 
So yeah. it's it's important to with you know organization and and um, know how it's it's important to like expand and be positive and have goals that you want to do and always kind of redefining yourself in different ways. Yeah, even if you know, because there are a lot of people that are victimized by certain circumstances, but even in the fact that like you are victimized by certain circumstances, that mentality of being a victim doesn't have to perpetuate, you know, over time. It doesn't have to, you know, be something that defines you. It, it, it's it's literally a mind frame. It's just a well, mind it frame. Is. Well, it's, it's, it's both kind of, if you think about it, because it's also psychological mm -hmm. and and that's why you see it more and more. You know what I mean? That would go into a whole different conversation of, of medical care and politics. And we don't have to hit that. But <laughs> but it's psychological in the sense that sometimes, like this podcast and what it's doing, you just need to hear something different. You know yeah. what I mean? And who knows exactly why people go through these things or what makes it worse or what makes it better to be exact. But it is something you have to juggle. Yeah, I know, man. I, I've I feel like from even from my own perspective, I've had to deal with a lot of things. Like I mentioned in the introduction, like you've seen me go through a lot of things yourself. And there were times when I was living with you that, you know, I was like, man, like I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like all I know is that like I just need to do something, but I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do because I just felt lost, I felt alone. But, you know, I just there's something in me that I just wouldn't let myself get stuck in that moment and just get stuck in that, you know, headspace uh, because I've been there before and it's not a comfortable feeling. And, and I don't ever want to I don't ever want to let that feeling grow familiar ever again. And, you know, it's it's interesting how different things cause that to ever because we all go. There's nothing, you know, like when you ask me for the quote, there's nothing in human experience that you're going through that someone else hasn't gone through, yeah. you know? even though it's the first for everything, you know what I mean in general, it's like yeah. shit repeat, or excuse me, things repeat themselves. You know, it's, it's, uh, who knows what it is that causes it for each individual person to go through something like that. Cause there's always a lot of different pressure points. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it takes different things for different people to be able to surpass it. But it's just simple conversations and people, you know, having someone to hear you. It's yeah. it's really all it is. If you have someone to hear you and you can just say whatever it is that's on your mind, there's always gonna be a positive way out. Yeah, I highly encourage people to, you know, even if it's you don't have anybody to talk to, or even if you don't have anybody to, you know, guide you like in person. I always feel like there's somebody out there, whether it be an artist, a musician, somebody out there that has a similar story that they've already shared. Like how you said, like there's already people that have been through it that you could tap into. Because I remember going through some really hard times when I was young, listening to certain songs. I was like, dude, like this is helping me right now. Like this in this moment, this is making me feel better because this person knows what I'm going through. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of a trip how you know, you would think beyond the 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 physical, you know, you would think that you're born with like a clean slate, you know, brain wise, right? Psychologically. And then little by little, you get hit with little traumas everywhere, you know, and, and or not little sometimes huge to little, you know, the bell curve, whatever. Yeah. And it's kind of like a like a virus that keeps growing inside of you. So it's you have to constantly be uh, addressing it because mm -hmm. it never it never stops <laughs> there's always little traumas throughout a lifetime you know it, it never stops so you you have to make it your you know your the the thing on the forefront is is always there and always working on it and always trying to f find uh whether it's a creative outlet or or improving communication you know it's just always having something on your or business, you know, money, whatever, you know, whatever makes you happy. So I'm wondering if that would fall into the category of mental health. Everything does, man. Everything does. And all our actions do. There's, there's in every, in every relationship, because you're talking about those traumas are relationships. There's, 
-hmm. there's specific things that happen in your life and sometimes we don't even remember them you know what i mean yeah. so it's like there's certain things that cause the the anxiety and the fear and and you know cuz like you you know just going back to your story just cuz it, it it reminded me of you know getting the call from from a mutual friend uh, my cousin or you know my cousin Joey your friend and um you know him just saying hey my boy Tim needs a place to stay we just had the place we had just gotten it and <laughs> there was a room available and you needed something as affordable as possible i was like yeah you know let's let's do it and and you told me you know i knew you from before i lived here in sac in yeah i'm like 2006 to 2008 and then i moved back to la and you know just hearing about it and and knowing your goals and intentions and you know having had your kid and, and how you were looking for something better is i you know, definitely want to be a part of that. Yeah. Man, I, I wonder why, like, you know, mental health isn't more talked about in general. You know, I'm, I, I, in my own perspective, I feel like it, it's partly, you know, like a masculine thing, like us men, we don't really like talking about stuff like that. Um, it is cultural for sure. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I guess you could attribute like masculinity, masculinity or femininity to it, but it, I think it's more cultural mm -hmm. and there is difference between men and women in cultures, obviously, but, but, um, you know, I've noticed, I, I, I tend to try to wear my heart on my sleeve in daily life. Like, you know, my, my, all my interactions, I, if I think it, I say it obviously trying to be respectful, but, yeah. but you do realize as you're getting older and you learn like how much information you share is, what and how much comes back you know what i mean so mm -hmm. there's that fine balance between being an open book talking about whatever you know even the the stuff people don't want to talk about religion money you know politics whatever and and uh limiting what information you give to people and that yeah. there's a, there's a really fine balance in in your relationships when you do that because that definitely affects your mental health you know what i mean yeah man i i totally agree i feel like you know, if you have the ability, you know, within yourself to share that much of yourself with people and be OK with it and be comfortable with yourself, like that's like an ultimate goal. You know what I mean? Just to have that confidence and have that ability to to not feel so like guarded and not feel so defensive about like personal things, which I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But like you said, man, like you just. It takes time. Like it's something that we there always triggers. Have to there's always a trigger, you know. There's always yep. a trigger, and and they're feelings that you don't even know why they exist. That's why I'm saying they start when you're a child and they just keep building. You don't yeah. know why that trigger exists. Why you're feeling anger or fear or you know whatever you know happiness. Why you're feeling these things from these little triggers around you. So always being introspective as to like what you feel is motivating you in, in every interaction, in every relationship. You know, I've been through uh, a few things where it's like some, you know, some things happened in my life that felt like almost like, you know, supreme being intervention. Mm -hmm. And then there's there's uh, things in, in my life that are coincidence or however you want to call it where, you know, probably when I was, I don't know, probably my early to mid 20s i don't remember exactly but i was you know working kind of going to school you know nothing legit going through all my you know life things and then i was working and i found a book uh on the on the rocks at the beach because i used to do like project management mm -hmm. and we would do like a big events you know what i mean like if they're doing a movie premiere at a mansion in malibu or whatever right so i'd have to drive there I got there early. It was a gated house. So I went to the beach and I found this book and it was uh, not to plug anything, but it was Dr. Dwayne Dyer, his first book. I forget exactly what it's called. Oh, uh, I love, I love Dr. Dwyer. Yeah. He, he, he's passed away, you know, rest in peace. But, he, but uh, that book, you know, I haven't read a lot. I think I've read like two of his books. Maybe I don't, I have such a bad memory, but it's those coincidental things that you can look at for like inspiration and you can look at for, for moving forward. You know, I found this book, it had no cover. I didn't know what it was. And I just started reading it. 
and it clicked something in me to want to do you know it's a self-help book that's what it's supposed to do but that yeah. can come from anywhere that mine literally came from a self-help book that i found you know on the beach but those little things in life can come from anywhere you know what i mean it kind of reminds me of how uh, bruce lee says be water my friend you know like exactly not, not having that that uh preconceived notion like oh it's just a book like i i don't need it like you know like i'm just gonna like look past it or whatever it's kind of like well you know like everything that's presented in front of you kind of has its own purpose you know everything yeah absolutely and every change happens for a reason you know like mm -hmm. how i came to be here without getting too personal about other people things but just anxieties that I was going through when I was living in LA and, and having to make a change, you know, that's similar to a book, right? Um, what I was doing for work, which I was a, a mental health counselor working with a, a team, you know, therapist, psychiatrist, psychologist, all that, mm -hmm. and um, interacting with, with kids on the daily in the community, which I love that job, but there are stressors about it where you take in a lot of, mm -hmm. um, baggage, I guess you would call it, you know, just uh, for the lack of a better word, but you, you see me. and experience a lot of other people's traumas yeah. and you realize how impacting they can be. You know what yeah. I mean? And and at the same moment, you know, that job is so underpaid. It's like, you can't, <laughs> you can't have that job and have a normal family life, which is a ridiculous thing in a society because those people should exist for like, a lot more than just the communities they're serving yeah. people to just talk to you know what i mean uh, yeah dude i totally agree i feel like if, if we as a society invested more in things like that uh we wouldn't have as many of these crazy things that happen in our society yeah absolutely yeah so in la i was going through those mental health issues of not making enough money working with kids which i love to do but still taking that home um and then at home going through some mental health stuff with personal relationships mm -hmm. and you know it it can it got so overwhelming where i was like so, something needs to change so that's why i ended up in sacramento and i was lucky enough to to be able to facilitate the move relatively easily um you know got here with the job and already looking for a house and and you know i had a lot of privilege in that transition which a lot of people don't have and that's not you know always the case when you need a change that you have all that available to you but i definitely you know have gone through and, and you know just like the book or just like the anxiety and moving from la or or you know changing from one job that you found stressful to a job that you love um finding uh new things that you like doing like recently you know probably like three months ago i started uh painting drawing you know just art in general mixed media and I love it, man. And it's something I've never done. I like, you know, you do like art projects when you're a kid and you do drawings and, but never considered it as something I would do. Uh, never, I don't, I don't know. Like I've always liked it, I guess, but never really did it. And then I just started and I'm like, oh man, this is awesome. I love this. And so it's finding the community. So, you know, my cousin Joey, uh, with the, at the Washington center, always doing art shows and, and, you know, he's been, he's a, he's a veteran in that community along with many others, you know, so I took this and I used the outlet and I found the community and with his help, you know, it's something that another thing that keeps you moving, that gives you goals that whatever it might be, you know, so it's, there's always, you know, you can think of those pivotal times when, you know, whether it's finding a book on the beach or, or anxiety and having to make a change or, or a job change or, you know, whatever. But in between those times, there's also a lot going on. So it's just self-reflection and communication. Yeah, man. Shout out Joey. Um, so let me ask you this. What do you what in in you know in making life decisions and in and in kind of moving forward, uh, what do you think is more important? Book smarts or street smarts? I mean, I, I would have to like sit here and define each one. But I think that we can look at it in a, in a kind of bigger picture to where just being rational and objective and, you know, taking in information and processing it and thinking of other people, walking in other people's shoes. You See, know, but I, would, I, would, I would call that street smart. Yeah, you could, you could label it street smart. Yeah. Uh, you could also read that in a book, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's both things, you know? So it's, 
it's kind of broadening our view and saying you should experience people and you should yeah. experience people on every level because you need to know what it's like to be in the different, you know, society changes a lot depending on the zeros on the back of that number. So, yeah. so you have to be able to, you know, speak to a, a homeless person and have respect and understand their reality and do it with, if you ever got to meet one, a billionaire, you know, it's, it's, if you under, if you, surround yourself with people and you understand communities and you walk in people's shoes and you're rational there's always emotion don't get me wrong emotion creeps in we're emotional animals you know what i mean but mm -hmm. you try to be rational and objective and listen to information and process and and you know always judging your environment and your people and you know there's there's success in that formula yeah i agree man um one of my favorite movies is uh, the bronx tale and they always talk about in that movie, uh, the main message is like uh, being book smart and street smart. So I always, yeah. I always took something from that because I, I agree with what you're saying as far as, you know, like just having the ability to talk to like pretty much anybody. Um, but that like, you know, how you said before, is kind of a reflection of yourself and like where you're at emotionally and where you're at mentally and spiritually. Um, and I think um, regardless of if you're book smart or street smart, having that, you know, introspective look at yourself is always step number one you know it's always got to be step number one because looking outward before you look inward is just a recipe for you're going to have to address it sooner or later and not only that but being consistent and habitual oh, scheduling the time to mm -hmm. be perspective and and in whatever environment you best suits you whether it's a yoga studio or a church or you know, it don't matter. Whatever it is that suits you, it's it's scheduling time to be introspective, to analyze the the interactions in your relationships, and to always grow. Always growing, man. That's that's a great point. Um, I know everybody has their own definition of this, and so I'm just curious what yours is because I like hearing what other people say uh, because there's such a wide spectrum. But what is your definition of success? My definition of success is being in a place where you feel free to be yourself. And, and with that, you know, you might, you obviously have to have income and, and you obviously have to have, you know, your basic necessities. But as far as how much more, that's all relative to the persons. So, it's more uh, doing what you love at the same time doing what you need, that, but making sure you keep that balance of both. And sometimes those things can intersect so completely where you just love what you're doing all the time. And sometimes they're not. I mean, there's, there's reality and there are things that you need to do that you're not going to love. You know what I mean? Got to pay the and, bills. And you can always play with that balance and you can always try to push it more to the love side and, and keep yeah. pushing it that way. Uh, but just realize that there's a need side, you know, and, and success is what you make it, you know, I might have a goal of, you know, owning property and, and being able to do, you know, art full time where I don't have to worry about income, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and it's something to work to, but there's a lot of needs that go into accomplishing that. But I don't stop doing what I love or my emotional outlet or, or creative outlet or, you know, whatever it might be, you know, music, acting, art, um, exercise whatever you know what i mean i totally understand what you're saying because that's the reason why i started this podcast man like just not feeling fulfilled you know like with what i'm doing like to fulfill my needs you know i wasn't addressing like you know what i really want to do and which is like just trying to help you know people grow and just try to be uh you know a, a, a beacon of inspiration you know somehow so like that to me is like uh my success as well like my definition of success is you know, just being able to help people, you know, and uh, I feel like I don't like judging people's definitions, the definitions of successes. I just try to encourage people to not put a price tag on their definition of success uh, because the price tag can always change. Oh, you know? and once you put a price tag to that, uh, it's, it's no longer about, you know, what's inside. It's more about the external factors that you're you're trying to uh appease that 
aren't necessarily going to do much for you in the long run. You know, you can always, you can go to anywhere in the world and you're going to find a person that lives in poverty and is completely happy. Yeah. And, and you can find the person that lives in a van because they choose to and yep. go where they want. Now, obviously when you're doing those things and mental health has a lot to do with it, there is the need side, right? Like person living in a van needs to be able to sustain themselves. So, mm -hmm. but you can, you know, go from that to rich, richness if you want. I always think there's like a moral boundary with how rich people get and what it takes and, you know, all those things. But that's for a different conversation. <laughs> no, I totally understand. I, I remember I went to Mexico when I was about 10 years old. And I remember, uh, you know, the place that we went to in Mexico City was in the barrio like on the, on the outskirts of the city and on the side of a hill, uh, concrete uh, little buildings, not necessarily houses, but they're just like concrete structures that everybody lives in. And they didn't even have uh, hot running water at the time. They didn't have a, a toilet that you could flush at the time. But I swear, like anything that they had, they were offering to us. And like, they were like some of the happiest people and the most kind people that I had ever met. And it wasn't a matter of like what they had or how they, you know, uh, you know how they looked or anything like that. It was just a matter of their character and about the principles that they held dear to them because that was the thing that they valued the most. And I'll never forget that because to me, it's like you know, if if you can if you can be a very kind-hearted person and a very generous person with absolutely like nothing materially, it says a lot about you. It does, but it also it. I mean. And that's not to judge the money part, you know, because there's people always have their um, their motivation and, and sometimes money and things is part of that, you know, yeah. but but there there is always an example of someone that needs less or needs more for you to find, especially now with the Internet, like and people blogging and, and podcasts and all that. There's always an example to, to decide what it is that suits you, you know. And mm -hmm. so that's that's where a definition of success is just so relative, you know. Yeah. Balance balance the need and the want, and decide yeah. where what your threshold is. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's great advice, man. Um, I tell my daughter all the time, you know, like I just want her to be able to live her passion and live her dream, um, so that she doesn't have to worry about any of this stuff. <laughs> I mean, she's gonna have to end up worrying about certain aspects of it, but. To be able to just have that be her main focus is like it would be a dream of mine to see her. There's do there's always gonna be something to worry about. And that's right. and that's where you know being introspective and, and being productive and all that thing comes uh, into being habitual and 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 using it to overcome those things because the thorns are always there. Always. And so you, there's always something to worry about, you know, regardless. It doesn't matter if you're rich, poor different ethnicity it don't matter there's always things to worry about and and all problems are relative so what might seem like a huge problem to you or nothing to you is the opposite to someone else you mm -hmm. know and that's all circumstantial on everything going on so it's not it's not taking other people for granted not taking their uh you know their experiences their their life for granted and that when when you learn to appreciate the people around you, whoever it might be, you're gonna appreciate yourself too. Oh yeah, man. My mom used to tell me, uh, dumb people don't learn, smart people learn from their own mistakes, and wise people learn from other people's mistakes. So if you're constantly in a state of learning, whether it be from yourself or from other people, you're gonna move forward. You're gonna you're gonna figure out the thing that you really want to do or what you you know what you're good at you know yeah and it's using your examples around you whether it's you know family friends you know whatever community yeah it's, it's looking at the people that have success which is why a, a podcast of this topic and this genre is so important you know what i mean is is it provides um people to look at the different interpretations or how success manifests differently in, in different people you know yeah. because you decide your spectrum you decide where you land on that spectrum yeah man it's been, been some great stuff to, that we uh talked about man any uh last words of advice or uh any kind of information you'd like to share with the young men out there that might be listening yeah i mean i i would say that 
you know, you asked me for that quote, and I think that's that's kind of an important thing in, in that anything that you're going through, someone else has gone through, and some not only have they gone through it, but have, have overcome it. So always work on yourself to be better. And if you have that switch flipped in your head, there will be times where it's really hard. There will be times where you're down and and you overcome it. Yeah, man, you got to let yourself be human, man. Got to let yourself feel the emotions, whether they're sadness, happiness, frustration, stress, whatever it is, you got to let yourself feel it and not feel like you have to mask it or hide it. You know, like we're all human, man. We're all going through similar things. And there's somebody out there that's going to relate to that. So but actively be looking for resources, actively be looking for things, communities, you know, whatever, it, whether it's being able to get mental health through whatever avenue or being a part of a community and not not and for some actually being the person that creates that community or creates that environment in yeah. whatever capacity that is it's is the human experience we're social animals it's bringing it together and it's you know bouncing off of each other and doing it with good intention every every decision you make if you make it with good intentions there are some that come out horrible but you can say I made it with good intentions. And so whatever the outcome is, no, I, live with it and I learn from it. I move on. Yeah, man. Thank you so much, George. Uh, this has been a great uh, conversation and I'm very grateful to have you on. Uh, well, I end uh, by saying this to everybody is that uh, one person can change the world, but it's one person at a time. And that one person is you. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you guys got anything from this, please hit the like, subscribe button, and drop a comment below. And stay tuned for more episodes of the Grown Man Sessions. Peace. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it.